Good afternoon guys, uh, Dr. Ken Nordberg back. I'm going to start a little short series here. Uh, we'll take a little time off from deer hunting seminars and we're going to start talking about hunting black bears for maybe three different seminars. I haven't done this yet and I've been meaning to do that. And it's the time of the year when people who are planning on it, black bears are starting to get serious. You know, they're getting their licenses from drawings, like here in Minnesota and elsewhere. And so interest is picking up about hunting black bears. And in the interest of giving you the kind of information you need to be successful at hunting black bears, including trophy class black bears. I'm talking about bears that weigh 300 to 600 pounds or more. Uh, it takes some special skills and knowledge and lots of precautions like when hunting trophy class uh, white-tailed bucks to be successful. And this I began learning years ago and I need to tell you a little bit about my background on bear hunting. For quite a few years, I paid guides, sometimes good money, <laughs> to hunt black bears. Uh, one in Montana uh, paid $70 for a dead horse to, for bait to take black bears. We never saw a bear there. I paid guides in Canada quite a few times, three different occasions, for opportunities to take black bears. Never saw a black bear in all those three hunts. And I kept thinking to myself, doing the things, kind of things they were doing, like uh, throwing some uh, suckers in a, in a pail, maybe about four or five suckers. They took me out to the big island out in the Lake of the Woods and say, oh, a lot of bear on the island. And they go over to the shoreline there and they take the pail and dump those three, four suckers on the ground. And then told me, just sit over there on that little outcropping over there with my bow about 20 yards away and he'd come back and he'd come back and get me at dark. <laughs> so I did that and that was basically it and when I didn't see a bear uh, sometimes they said they had excuses like uh, 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 we're probably going to have an early winter and when they have an early winter the bears don't you know don't eat as much in the fall or something like that. I don't know. They had all kinds of ideas about how to do it. Well, with all the time I spent sitting on rocks like that, waiting for a bear to show up, I started to get some ideas on how I would go about hunting black bears myself. Then finally, in the early 1970s, uh, uh, bear hunting became something new in Minnesota. And uh, they had a, a drawing. For, for licenses, and uh, the first year that we that license were, was drawn, my youngest son Ken got the license. And at that time, I think, you know, I was thinking, you know, we're going to start doing things a lot differently. We're not going to hunt like those people. We're not just going to go out in the woods and dump some bait on the ground and then sit in a tree and expect to see a bear. We're going to do this a lot differently. So when we started, I, one of the things we I learned was sitting on up there in Canada watching those fish is that a lot of other things ate the fish like seagulls and eagles <laughs> and mink. And if anything got left overnight, it was gone in the morning. Uh, probably a fox got them or maybe a wolf. Uh, and the great bait was gone. And one of the things I learned early that the kind of baits I wanted to use weren't, weren't cheap. You had to pay money for them. And uh, in time we learned a lot of things about different baits and which were best for attracting black bears and how to go about using them. Well, that first year, that first day we hunted, we, I had two stand sites set up out in the woods. And at those two stand sites, we saw 13 bears. Some of them were, I it was just there to take pictures of them, but 13 bears at two stand sites. Now in that area, I'd been hunting there for 45 years, and we hardly ever saw a bear. 
Uh, most of the time when we'd see a bear, it would be a great big one. <laughs> we'd be, he'd cross a logging trail, and when he'd get out in the middle, it was all bear, great big things, you know. And so we knew there were really big bears up there. But when we started hunting, all we were seeing is smaller bears. The biggest bear we saw was probably a sow about, that weighed about 250 pounds. And in the first few years, that, that's the way it was. We'd see bears anywhere from cubs, uh, first year cubs or second year cubs, with, uh, with mama bear. Second year cubs weighed about 80 to 100 pounds. And then sub-adult bears, uh, new terms I was learning, these were older bears like two and a half and three and a half year old bears that lived on their mother's range. And I, we learned that, gee, the mother's range was about square, four square miles in size. And so on that range, you could see a, this one mother bear, which would typically have 250 pounds. Some of them get to be bigger, get nice and fat. Uh, and with their cubs, and she might have anywhere from two to three or, uh, cubs here in Minnesota, out in the East Coast, they can have as many as six. But two to three was pretty common here. So you put that together with uh, two to three sub-adults, <laughs> and that's a lot of bears in a four square mile area that we never saw. So it was a complete surprise. Uh, my son ended up getting a nice chocolate covered one. It was about 250 pounds, about that size. And uh, we thought it was really a nice bear. Uh, but we, get, we knew there was much bigger ones in the area, and we weren't seeing them. So we started experimenting, doing different things. Uh, in the beginning, we dug a pit in the ground and, and laid heavy logs across the top, and we figured, well, the bears will be able to move those logs. And uh, that way, uh, all these other animals in the woods, including a lot of gray wolves, were going to eat that bait. In, during the time that we were hunting, they wouldn't get it all. And so we'd save some money that way, besides having plenty of bait there for the bears to take advantage of. Well, we learned after a few years of doing that, if you had a heavy rain, those pits would get all filled up and that bait you had in there would turn into a kind of a sloppy mush. And after a while, it, it, after heat, it would kind of evaporate the water and pretty soon it'd have a you look in there, there was a stinky mess crawling with maggots. And there's been a myth going around about what's good for bear bait for years and years and years, and it was always thought that stinkier the bait, the better it was. Well, bears didn't like that kind of bait. They wouldn't touch it. You could sit there for a year. And you, once they got a whiff of that, so nah, they wanted to do it. I found out. The very best bait, as far as meat was concerned, was very fresh meat. They like it fresh, just like humans. And they'll go through a lot to get at that bait. We, <laughs> I'll never forget the night we had a bunch of it in a barrel. We made a platform up in the tree so the bears couldn't get in. I put metal flashing around the tree so they couldn't climb up past those flashings. And we used the ladder to go up there. That was our bait we were going to use during the week that we were going to hunt bears. Well, we got what we wanted in a matter of two days, but I remember that first night, we had bear, that was right behind our camp, it wasn't about 30 feet from the back of our tent. We had bears trying to climb past that metal flash all night. It was a hard time getting a good night's sleep because of that. But anyway, we were learning. And then finally, in 1999, I decided to write a book. Cause we had guys from all over the country, well, all over Minnesota, hunting along this, oh, it's about a 20 mile long logging trail, wilderness trail in the woods for black bears. And none of them were having any luck. They weren't seeing bears, they were coming, we were getting bears, but they were coming and asking me for advice about how to hunt bears. And I said, so, well, these guys need help, and to probably a lot of other people too. And that, in 1990, finally, I published my first bear book, and entitled uh, "Do It Yourself: Black Bear Baiting and Hunting." And that was an instant uh, 
it'd be instantly became a popular book all over America, even in Canada. I had Canadian guides ordering them by the dozens to give to clients after they were paid up for hunting in the fall. They'd, you know, pay up for a future hunt and they'd say, the guides would send them a book to get them prepared for hunting so they'd have a better chance of taking a larger bear because we had learned how to do that. This book became known as the Bear Hunter's Bible. Here in Minnesota and other states as well where uh, DNR people were teaching, giving hunters uh, instructions so they'd have a better chance of taking a bear, always told them, get Dr. Nordberg's bear book. You do everything he says in there and you're going to get a bear. It's just going to be automatic. Well, it was that way in the beginning. But you know, black bears can live up to 33 years. Did you know that? They can, they can get to be pretty old animals. And after they've been hunted by hunters using bait for a few years, they get to be pretty smart about that. And hunters, in their efforts to try to improve matters, can make things worse and worse and worse. And uh, so, uh, after I wrote this initial book, uh, some years later, 2001, I wrote another one. I was asked by Bear Hunting Magazine, and I used to write articles for them, that you should write another book because people are constantly asking for it. So I wrote, I updated version, came out in 2000, what is it, 2002? Let me look here. 2001. That was updated. And this contained a list of a lot of new precautions you had to take to have a chance of getting a really big bear. You know, a kind that of, would make a huge rug. In fact, when I started doing this stuff, I finally got my first record book bear. And I wanted to tell you too, uh, the first few bears we got were shot with rifles. But very soon, because we were avid bow hunters back then, we decided to try hunting these bears with a bow. And that was an interesting experience because one of the things that I always want, I learned real early, when you shoot a black bear, you want to exit wound. If you don't get that exit wound, you know, you're shooting from up, we, we set our uh, stand sites about 10 feet above the ground, you shoot down at the bear. If you don't, your arrow will go into the bear high on one side or from quarter and away high going into the chest cavity. If it doesn't exit, it exits low on the opposite side of the bear, you aren't going to have much of a blood sign, if any, because bear hair, uh, as coarse as it is on the outside, is like cotton underneath. There's a cotton layer underneath. And it's like gauze or cotton, and it gets in the hole, and the, and the blood clots in there, and and the bear can go half mile without any blood showing on his trail. You can lose a bear. You know, one of the things we learned with the bull, by the way, if you shoot him properly, and I, we shoot him, always shot our bears about seven yards from our tree stand. Hey, only seven yards, right there. Boy, one of those big guys comes in there and your heart's something, that you want a thrilling hunt. <laughs> Shoot, hunt a big black bear with a bull. He's right down there and he's messing around with your bed and then he'll look at you. <laughs> and the reason he looked at you is because you're so uh, dumbstruck, you know, oh, there's this big bear. That bear can hear your heart beating if your mouth is open. You got, your mouth's got to be shut. <laughs> it's going to be anyway, but if your mouth's open, it's going to hear that. It's going to hear that up there. What is that? Of course, well, there's a lot to know about why that look at you isn't going to make the bear run away. Because he's conditioned to a lot of things. That's, conditioning is part of what black bear hunting is about. Thing is, you can take black bears without bait. Like up in Alaska, they ride around the boat in these inlets, you know, along the, uh, the panhandle. And they, oh, there's a bear way up there. And we'll go ashore here and we'll sneak from downwind or crosswind get close to that bear that's feeding out there on the flats there, and then we'll get the bear. Well, that works out right there. But for the most part, like 
in northern Minnesota where we hunt deer and bear, it's all woods. And it, well, there's little, there, there's a lot of lakes in northern Minnesota too, but hunting from shorelines there with heavy timber right down to the water on all those lakes, that's not a, not a way that you're going to get a bear very often. Maybe if you're lucky, maybe once in a lifetime. And then out in the woods you can hunt there for 45 years and maybe see one bear. You aren't going to be very lucky at taking a bear unless you take used bait. That's the one time I, you know, I totally agree you got to use bait. The only way you can control bear numbers in your state is by using bait. But not just any bait, a certain bait, and the thing is, you know, what, what it gets down to is like, like you're out here and maybe there's a hundred mile away, another one over here about five miles away, and they got bait out there, they were doing things like filling gunny sacks and hanging them in trees for bait and things, all kinds of crazy concoctions. But you're competing not only with other hunters for taking a big bear, he's got this 30 square mile range, uh, you're competing with other hunters, but you're competing with competing with wild foods. You know, couldn't be hard to get bear out of a blueberry patch when you got blueberry or a raspberry patch. Oh, you got to have something that's better than anything they find anywhere to get big bears. Otherwise, someone else might keep do all this work and someone else rip the bear. But at any rate. Anyway, my, this became my second White Tail Hunter's Almanac, or Bear Bible. <laughs> uh, now, some years later, you know, I used to put on hunting schools, the buck and bear hunting schools in northern Minnesota in the first part of May, every year. And my son, John, uh, came up there a couple times, two, three times, and and made movies, you know, videos of the whole operation. Half the time my was in a classroom, and half the time was out in the woods. And out in the woods, I showed people every kind of bear sign imaginable. You know, signs made by bears. So, all right, you can walk around and say, "You wonder if there's any bears?" Well, well, look at that anthill that's been all dug up. Great big anthill. Or, look at that rotten log out, it's been all torn out, big chunks. The only animal in the woods that's going to do that is a bear. He's getting grubs out of that. Or look at that tree, there's a hole ripped open on one side. That's a bear that used, got, uh, did that to the tree to get bees and honey in that tree. But there's lots of bear signs. And, but you don't notice them unless you know what to look for. Or big boulder flipped over, they flip them over. And maybe they get angleworms and grubs and all kinds of things running around under there and he flips over and the bear loves to eat those. So anyway, lots of things like that. But anyway, uh, so this is a complete uh, uh, DVD, well there's two of them in there, of everything that hunters learned about black bears that came to my hunting school. So that's a pretty nice set of videos to get. That, that's available. When you go to my store you can find out about that. Then, a uh, few years later, uh, we, I decided to make a ebook, the third edition of my uh, do-it-yourself black bear baiting and hunting book, the third edition. That was a fun book to do because it was all in color and on different pages in the book you can tap the screen, like on your computer or your tablet or even TV set. Here's a picture and you tap on that and bingo! You got a, a live video going on. <laughs> and I we're out in the woods and I'm showing you things in the woods that you need to see and learn about. And how to set up a, a, a bait stand site. Well, how to select one even from the beginning. It's a, those are, That's a heck of a set of videos. Those those uh, two DVDs in there, and uh, uh, so uh, anyway, that became available. We put that on Apple. It's an Apple ebook. Well, Amazon is a heck of a outfit for selling books. We made an ebook for Amazon, 
And that's the fourth edition. But, you know, it's essentially the same book as the one on Apple. Apple's got the videos in it, and it's kind of a fun thing. It's all in color, but we went to Amazon. We had to make changes. It's a black and white book. Well, it didn't seem fair that you didn't have any of the videos with that particular book, so we made a separate video with those videos that goes along with the book. So when you buy the book, you can also buy a separate DVD to go with the book, and you have essentially the same thing as you would have uh, if you bought the, the Apple book. But only the, only the DVDs are in color, but it's all there, everything you need to know. So we really, this, I think this one even, even includes uh, my grandson Tyler getting his first bear. And we field dressed it, so you can you can see there just how to how you should properly field dress bears. Terribly important, you know what bears eat, and some of that stuff isn't exactly fresh. You don't want that on bear meat. Bear meat is the most wonderful bear uh, wild meat in the world. Uh, black bear meat, and you don't want it contaminated with b bad bacteria. Yeah, so. You got to know how to properly hunt a bear. It has a lot to do with the way you shoot a bear as well. But anyway, there's that. Then finally, so we got we had four editions now of that book. Now the fifth edition is my latest one. This one was just published a year ago, and it's not a little book. <laughs> it's a big one, and it's considerably updated. Lots of new things to know, like the effects of of gray wolves on black bear hunting, uh, that, can, that can be quite substantial actually. So lots of new precautions and a few new tricks, but this is my new bear hunting Bible. Big book, 8 by 10. It's not, it's not as thick as my 10th edition of White Tailers Almanac, but man, it's, this is the best bear book I think you can buy for hunting black bears today. So constant updates have brought this book about. I'm really proud of this one. So that's for sale at my store too. And uh, it's, it's just a really good book. And then, now, with this book, uh, you can, you'll get a set of DVDs, this one set, uh, free to go with this book. And these are in color, the pictures, they're the same as what you get with the fourth edition. Uh, but with this book, this bigger, much bigger book, you get it free. So there's lots of combinations, lots of ways you can get bear hunting information. Um, and I've tried to give you the best of what there is. And this has got the latest material on what you got to do nowadays to get bigger black bears, the 300 to 600 pound bears which is quite a bit more than back in the old days, in the 1970s, when we first began hunting black bears. So, so this is my latest bear hunting Bible, right here. That's the one you need now. If you want everything I, that you could possibly find uh, uh, that I've written or said in the woods or at my schools, Probably the most complete combination that I have available would be this book, the free video that comes with it, the free DVDs that come with it, and my my two uh, hunting school videos. So, which is different. So, with those three, uh, I don't think you can find as much information about black bear hunting anywhere. Well, I know you can. Unless somebody copies everything that's in this book, that won't happen. Well, anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Now you know why I do this, you know, why I teach people about bear hunting and what I've been through to be able to do that. So I'm going to give you a few seminars about bear hunting, and at first to be kind of general information. Like, for example, I already mentioned bears can live up to 30 some years. Uh, like, for example, sizes of ranges. Uh, female bears, often called sows, 
And I think that's unfortunate because they have, they are, I don't know, they're not anything like pigs. Uh, I would rather just call them female bears, but they call them sows. Uh, they live on ranges about four square miles, like I said, in size. And the kind of terrain that they live in is pretty much like you know, the kind of terrain you know a lot about, where whitetails live. Uh, they, uh, they like highlands, and I think it's mostly because they're little cubs when they're little, gee, when they're born, they're just little five, ten pound little teddy bears. They have, a, they would have an awful hard time getting around in swamps and bogs, like, like uh, spruce bogs and cedar swamps and elder swamps and cattail swamps. Those little bears wouldn't have a chance getting around in places like that. And they would be quite vulnerable to bigger predators like gray wolves. I'm sure gray wolves kill and eat a fair number of, of uh, baby black bears every year. But at any rate, uh, that's why they live on highlands. And they don't need a lot of space. Usually their space is well, is well selected. Uh, there's plenty of wild berries there, like a blueberry patch over here. Oh man, you got a blueberry patch or several blueberry patch. We have a lot of blueberry patches in northern Minnesota. And raspberry patches, they're real common up there too, and they provide fruit until late in the year. But there's other, a lot of other plants out there like uh, bunch berries, Prudus little scarlet berries, yeah, they eat those, and uh, and service berries in the spring, and uh, uh, choke cherries, and elderberries, and all kinds of berries out there. Which is the reason that, well I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but the reason why uh, bear droppings, or scats, or whatever you want to call them, are, are you, you can identify them more easily as from bears. But one of the one of the tricks about being successful at hunting black bears is knowing where to look for bear signs, especially tracks. I like to use tracks. Now, back in the old days, people used to, I'd read articles by hunters who say, you know, their front paws were four and a half inches wide and more, that was pretty great. Well, I, I don't like measuring tracks of front paws to uh, identify the, the kind of bears that made them. I, I have, it, they correlate much, the size of the bears correlate much better with the lengths of the hind paws, including indentations made by their claws in the dirt. You know, their claws aren't retractable, so where they walk, those claw marks are always in the front of those tracks. So, but the longer high, the hind feet are like human feet in a way, and with claw marks in the dirt in front of them, and they're longer, and they're much more reliable for predicting the kind of bear that made the track. And so to me, that always seemed really important. Well, well before I go further, let's mention the, the big boars. Big boars like wet lowlands, damp lowlands. Well, there'd be maybe islands, places the highlands are mixed up with it, or along edges, or places like that, but huge. And the reason they're, you know, up to 30 square miles in size is because it takes a lot of berries and ants and grubs to feed a bear like that. Well, they eat a lot of grass in the spring, too. That's why they like grass, like cows, they'll graze on it. But takes a lot of food in one area for the, to feed a bear like that. And because of that, they need a big area. And they move around a lot through that area. Now, there will be different foods that are available at different times of the year, but not everywhere in their, in their ranges, whether it's sows or, or boars. It isn't everywhere. They don't find food everywhere. So they go to place from place to place throughout their range. They keep moving to find more food. You know, they go to this berry patch here today, and mm, I think I'll go to that next one up there. 
a block away, and they they keep following certain trails. Now it can change during the course of the year as different foods become available. Like maybe walnuts are falling. Bears love wal uh, not walnuts. Acorns are falling. Usually start out falling in the last week or two of August, and black bears like to eat them when they're still green. You know, they're more bitter then, but they're a lot easier to chew. <laughs> and they they can big black bears. I'm not going to wait. They'll go up to one of these oak trees and grab a lower branch and shake it and break it off. We've got some. We have the only oak trees we have where we hunt are red oaks which retain their leaves in the winter. And there's one big patch up there of red oak. Some of these trees have probably been there for about 50 years. But they don't get, grow real large in Minnesota. They're kind of scrubby trees, but you go up there and it looks like a war zone. The bears have been busting up branches, lower branches on those trees for years. And you go up there and say, holy cow, you know, a tornado go through here recently. It's just beer sign. <laughs> it's really strange. But anyway, because food doesn't grow everywhere, they follow certain routes. Now it's hard to tell where they follow. You know, when a bear walks in the woods and it wants to be quiet, if it, some of those boys, they don't care if they're quiet. They're at the top of the food chain. They don't give a damn if anybody knows they're coming. <laughs> but if they want to be quiet, they lift their feet up real high. It looks really weird the way they can walk right through an elder swamp without making any noise, just silent, like, like they're walking on air. But anyway, the, those big bears can do that. But anyway, they follow certain routes. And for that reason, it's kind of important if you're a bear hunter to find a spot where they're very likely to pass when you're hunting there. In, in other words, it's got to be a place where you find bear signs, especially recent bear signs, because it can change all the course here. And the one sign I look for every time to start with is bear traps. You know, see all kinds of other signs, but that one might have been made last June or May or whatever. You want something that's really fresh. And, Fresh bear tracks, the only place you're going to find them is in soft, damp soil. You know, like along edges of beaver ponds. Beaver, bears love beaver ponds. I don't know if it's for the water, but there could be a lot of interesting things to eat around here, including the beavers. I know they love to eat beavers if they can get them. And anyway, they're not, bears are not really good at chasing and, and killing animals like deer and moose. And there has to be something wrong with the deer for one to catch one. Uh, so they don't get as much meat as they'd like. They love meat. And uh, boy, that's one of their, that's one of the uh, failures they have when they finally smell some holy cow there's somewhere that was put there by a hunter. They love bear meat. That's the number one bait for bears to some degree. <laughs> and I'll talk to you more about things like positioning bait. Positioning bait. Put the bear right where you want it, when you want to shoot it, quartering away with your bow. You shoot down behind the last rib, about halfway down the body, right there, and he's quartering away and you shoot. The arrow's going to go through the lung on your side, down through the heart. Just, you see a perfect X or three. <laughs> three-sided uh, star-shaped opening through the heart with, you know, or, and it'll go right through and come out below the other shoulder on the other side, making your exit one, which you've got to have so you have a good blood sign. But anyway, when you shoot a bear like that, every time, it probably will go no, no farther than 17 yards, go down and growl three to five times and be dead, just like that. A bull with a 60 pound pull or greater can be every bit as deadly as a 7 millimeter magnum or 375, whatever kind of cartridge you want to use. It, it, you can't believe how deadly a, a bull can be on bears. When it gets down to it, bears are actually easier to kill with a bull than deer. They'll go down much more quickly if, as long as you do it right every time. 
and therein lies the safety in bear hunting. Nothing worse than having a wounded bear to follow up. You don't want that. You want to drop your bear quick. For another reason for doing that is that you get excellent bear meat, you know? An unsuspecting bear that's killed quickly like that, just seconds, it's over there and it's dead. If that meat is going to be so good. Best, bear, best wild meat you ever ate in your life. It, guaranteed, absolutely. The steaks, the chops, the zoo, anything you do with bear meat, you're just going to be so impressed with it. Well, anyway. So bear tracks. Well, let's talk a little bit about bear tracks. One of the tracks you might find, gee, here's some soft swans. Gee, they're only four inches long. And you just their little claws in the front and they think, maybe they're fisher tracks. They have claws too, I like guess. But they aren't, you know. There's the wider ones in the front and a little than the longer ones in the back. And maybe tracks of a bigger bear. <laughs> well, anyway, that's mama bear. But four inch track, that's just First year cub in the, you know in that fall, and those things probably won't weigh more than 80 pounds, and uh, in the fall they aren't very big. They're about the size of a black lamb. Don't shoot that. How could you ever be proud of a bear skin rug or hide or of only the size of a black lamb? That would be horrible. So don't shoot the baby bears. Now, two-year-old. Now, the mother bears only have cubs every other year because the the cubs stay with them for two years. You know, she'll have a bear this year. They're little. Next year, they're going to be bigger. They'll have five-inch tracks next year. They'll be bigger. And those bears could weigh 125 to 150 pounds when they're that size. And bigger bears now, but still not a whole lot bigger than a black lab. But then that summer, that mother bear will breed and it will have cubs the following spring. And there's quite an involved sequence of events for, during meanwhile, which I won't go into now. And so the, those cubs, those two-year-old cubs, they get chased away. Yeah, I don't want you around me anymore. I got these babies now to take care of. Well, they don't go away. They stay on the range. Right? But by this time, they've learned a lot from the mother what's good to eat, where to find them. And uh, so you can have these other bears living on their range and they're living independently, or maybe if they were twins, they could be together li living. Well, they stare at really big bears. Uh, some I've seen some uh, uh, older cubs, you know, the, 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 well, we call them sub-adult bears that will weigh 175 pounds, 125 to 100 to 175 pounds, and they look bigger. Gee, one comes in alone and says, oh, that looks like a big bear. But, you know, that's the funny thing about bear hunters and bears. If you see a sub-adult that weighs 175 pounds, you think it's a, gee, that's a big bear, I gotta shoot that. And you get the bear, and then you bring it to the station where you check in, you know, and they weigh it. And, it, and they, after you field dress, they, they don't lose near as much weight as a, as a deer when you field dress. It's, it's surprising, you know, it's just a small amount of entrails in a bear compared to a deer. But it'll lose some weight, and you'll look at the scale there, and it's, well, that can't be true. This bear, that scale is really screwy. That's, that bear is a lot bigger than that weight that you have on here. This well maybe even it's maybe it's a little rusty or something. And then you get home and somebody says, Well how'd you do it? So well I got a three hundred pound bear because <laughs> it looked like it was a three hundred pound bear. So there's an awful lot of three hundred pound bears that are taken every year by hunters that are actually only hundred and twenty five to hundred and seventy five pound bears. And uh, then the ones that get, would get away, the ones they don't get, those, oh, I saw a couple 500 pounders. For, seems like the only bears in the woods are either 300 pounders or 500 pounders, or a little cub. And uh, so you see some, now you see these 500 pound bears that probably are 250 pound bears, half that, like mom, the mom bear. Now, a, uh, uh, 
an adult sow will generally weigh about 250 pounds. Some of them get closer to 300, but most of them are around 100, uh, 250 pounds. That looks like a lot of bear. And from nose to tail, the tip of the nose to where the tail is, they'll be five feet long. That's typical. Well, one of the things we learned early is that when bears come, especially if they're single bears, like maybe a subadult or a female, uh, 250 as no comes this year for some reason. Maybe the wolves got them or something. But anyway, they come to come to your bait and you think, boy, that's a that's sure a big bear there, and I want to get them. And then you're disappointed afterwards when you find out how much it really weighs and how long it is. Well, what I did then back then was just to make sure we don't shoot any more little bears. And I made a I cut a stick six foot long and put some stakes on it and put it in the ground just past our bait crib. Well, bait pit. We were using pits in the early years. Put it over there just beyond that. So when the bear comes over there, you can look at that stick and if it's a foot shorter, well, that's a 250-pound bear. Anything shorter than that, well, that's a little bear. You know, you want so you don't shoot it. And when you're on a sow range, you can see a whole variety of different bears there. Uh, at your bait, and some are really stupid, you know, you can walk in and they run away, these little ones, and you climb up your tree and you think, oh, geez, I really screwed up. And 15 minutes later, here they come back again. You know, the little bears do that. That's another reason a lot of little bears are taken by hunters. So, anyway, so uh, a bear that has tracks that are only five inches long is a subadult, and it's not going to weigh, probably won't weigh 200 pounds. Now, mama bear, that 250 pound bear might be more to, you know, 20, 30 pounds more even on some of them. Uh, her tracks will be seven inches long. That includes those little imprints by the clock, seven inches. Now that's a 250 pound bear. You know, it's one of the things about bears, you know, in record books, they measure skulls. Now, some 250-pound bears, not a lot of them, will have skulls that will actually qualify for the Pope and Young record book. Big skulls on them. And some 500-pound boars might not qualify <laughs> because of the length and width of the skull have a smaller hand on them. And it's not the best possible way to measure an animal for the record book, but you know why they use the skull like that? Because many years ago, back when I was young, it was discovered some guys were going up to Alaska and shooting big brown bears. And boy, some of those brown bears, you know, they weighed 1,400, 1,500 pounds, and, and you skin them out, and, from claw to claw in the front, they'd be 10 feet across. And from nose to tail, it'd be another 10 feet. And they'd say, that bear squares out at 20 feet. And so, for a long time, bears went in the record book according to the size of their hide stretched out on the ground. Well, what was happening is some guys were getting a big bear and they just, they just decided, well, I want this to be the top bear in the record book. So they tie the hide between trees and throw boulders on them to stretch them out and let them hang there for a few days and pretty soon the hide's pulled all the way to the ground. Now let's measure, oh boy, this one is really huge now in this way. Well, when that got around, the, the, the record book keepers decided that we can't have that anymore. And so they said, from now on, we'll measure skulls. <laughs> well, so I know a guy got a 500-pound boar. It was actually a little over that. They didn't qualify for the Pope and Young. You got it with a bow. <laughs> so that can happen. And you can shoot a, a, a sow <laughs> that can qualify. Got a great big skull. My, my son Dave's got one of those. Well, anyway. 
Now, let's take it. So I told you about a, a seven inch bear. Now you know what makes that kind of a track. And all the smaller tracks you know about those, all the way from, you know, four, five, and six inches long. So now you know these are bears you don't want to shoot. <laughs> if you know, unless you think, oh, I'll take that mother bear, but Remember I told you about that. If you shoot that mother bear, those little cubs she's got aren't going to survive the winter. Uh, they're gone. And uh, so uh, that's something you do if you shoot a bear with cubs, little cubs. You shouldn't do that. A bear with big cubs, that's another story. They, she's getting close to where she's going to chase them away anyway. But those still, still, still aren't very big bears. Now, if you want a trophy class bear, you know, sure, you know, really big one, you want tracks eight and nine inches. A few of them even get ten inches, you know, length of the hind track. Eight, nine, that's a nice bear. That's a big bear. Now, whether it goes in the record book or not, it's going to be a, you're going to have a bearskin rug or a mount that nobody is going to consider to be a small bear. Yeah, that's a big bear. Now, bears with eight inch tracks are going to be six inches, six feet long from nose to tail. And, you know, here's a stick. And one thing we learned earlier, the stick, you know, mother bear comes in and she, oh boy, I got all this good stuff to eat in the pit. And her cubs aren't that all that inch, they might eat a little bit. But they see this stick <laughs> behind there. We're stuck in the ground with stakes and it's sticking up. They want to play with that. Oh, geez, they're going to tear it all up because <laughs> out there it's broken. And so, so I finally decided, well, the only thing to do, uh, instead of, you know, having irregular logs, of lengths of logs that cover the pit so all these other creatures can't eat that bait, is make them all six, inches, six feet long. So that's what we did. covering logs six feet long and we lay them across our bait well it's a bit well we do something else nowadays that we make a crib we don't make holes anymore in the ground just a crib but we lay our logs we cut our log and we lay them at right angles to the guy in the tree stand right over there so one way or another when the bear's there it's gonna move around and you go oh geez that's a six foot bear <laughs> You might see one that's longer than that. <laughs> and that that's a really big bear. But you got to be looking at six foot long bears if you're thinking, oh, I just got to get a record book bear. Well, that's possible. And a bear that long can weigh 500 pounds. I've, I've gotten a couple that were that long. One, one of them is in the record book. The other one wouldn't have been if the butcher hadn't cut off the back of a skull. And uh, so, just a moment. But it's not terribly important. But they were nice bears, both of those. But the one was almost 500. And they, they were huge bears, six feet long. And uh, they look huge <laughs> when they come in. So, now, you're getting some kind of an idea of what bear hunting is all about and the possibilities and things like where to shoot them and where to look for their signs, and things like that. But it gets to be a lot more complicated than that. I mean, you really do it. You know, if you find tracks of a big bear in a certain place, the odds are pretty good that that bear is going to come back there often. It, a, a big boar it takes him four or five days to get all the way around his, his range to come back. Here's some fresh tracks. Uh, you could sit there for the next four days and never see that bear. And then you go home <laughs> and you come back you come back the next weekend and all the bait's gone, you put all new bait and gee there's fresh tracks of that big bear all around where you put the bait. <laughs> that great big thing and you load it all up again, you sit there all weekend and don't see a bear and you come back and then a couple of days later here he comes again like he always does, you know. 
And each while your baby spends a few days there eating about 50 pounds at a time. And then pretty soon he's gone again, you come back. This, you can play that game with bears every year and never see a big black bear. So there's other things you gotta do as well. But it's a lot more complicated than you think. You just don't walk out in the woods and throw some donuts on the ground and then go sit in a tree and expect to get a bear. Not a big one, not nowadays. So a lot more to learn. And I'm going to be very happy to tell you all about how to get bears like that. And uh, it's going to take a few more seminars to do it. Uh, I figure maybe I can get in two, but it'll probably be maybe more. Maybe it'll be more. We'll see. But there are a lot of black bears in 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 the uh, in, uh, United States, in different states. Record book, the newest record book comes from California. Uh, but a lot of black bears in the United States and in Alaska and, of course, in Canada. And uh, their population is strong. And uh, But... If you do things right, you know, and take proper precautions, your odds of taking a big one are going to be very good. So, meanwhile, something to think about. If you're getting ready to go bear hunting, uh, I urge you to buy the book. I mean, I like to sell books, but honestly, I want you to have all the best information that you've got to have for taking a big bear like that. And that's in there. And... Uh, That'll make a lot of difference in your success. If you don't, I know your, the odds are you're going to be disappointed, unless you have a very good guide. You know, somebody that does all the work. Well, you don't need to spend that money. You can get big bears, too, without a guide. Uh, it's just knowing how to do it. Uh, when you know what to do, all of a sudden your woods is full of bears. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. It's, it's such... It is a terribly exciting thing to do. I tell you, uh, Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett loved bear hunting. They loved to eat bear meat. And they always used to say the true metal of a hunter is how he reacts when a bear is just a few feet away. Well, the way I teach you to do it, he's going to be a few feet away. It's going to, but it's going to be very safe, and you're going to be deadly as heck. <laughs> and you're going to be right really proud of the fact that you got this great big bear. And wait till you get a steak off the grill from that bear. Oh man, that's, you just won't believe it. It's going to be like gold in your freezer. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll be looking for you again future. And while you're at it, uh, Push that little red button down there. <laughs> when you do that, you're going to get regular. Uh, you'll be reminded every time I post a new YouTube presentation. And, uh, uh, and tell your buddies about this. You know, other bear hunters. But you want to really learn some stuff about bear hunting, you got to watch these YouTube presentations. And uh, when you get to the point where think you ought to check in on this book. You can go to my website. Uh, it's drnorberg on deerhunting.com. And you get to that and press on the button that's for store and you'll find all kinds of information about my bear book, my list stuff, and the videos, how to order them, that kind of thing. But don't go bear hunting without it. <laughs> you'll be sorry. Really, yeah, after a while, I said, oh, I should have got that book. <laughs> yeah, really. And I'm not just, I'm not bragging or kidding or lying. This is the truth. So, with that, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you soon. Be sure to visit my website. Here's the link. Here you'll find links to my blog posts, my Twitter account, my YouTube account. My Amazon store with links to my ebooks. My son's eBay store, a money saver if you're ordering from Canada or other countries. And be sure to sign up for my email updates. Here you will also find deer and bear hunting articles, my website bookstore, and much more.